Today we're doing a battery replacement in a popular panel-mounted electronic chronometer. This is the AstroTech LC2, and as you can see, we've already removed it from the panel using the two mounting screws. Now here's something you may find a bit confusing. In this installation, you'll see that there appears to be electrical power going to the unit. But in fact, the voltage from the airplane is merely lighting the unit. The quartz chronometer itself is battery powered. And according to the manufacturer's instructions we found online, a single screw must be removed from the case in order to replace a AAA battery. With that single screw removed, the case opens easily to reveal a fairly simple instrument and, as you can see at the top of the image, there's a AAA battery. In replacing it, of course, we want to be careful to observe polarity to avoid damage to the clock. Here you can see that once the battery was removed, there was substantial evidence of corrosion. So we're going to clean up this terminal first. To clean the contact for the battery connection in the case, we're going to use a quick-drying, no-residue electronic cleaner. You can find this in stores such as Radio Shack or perhaps your local hardware store. We've sprayed the contact, but as you can see, some residue remains. We'll remove that by gently scraping with the tip of a small screwdriver. After a bit of scraping, we found that the corrosion was more widespread than anticipated. So after we've cleaned up this terminal, we'll give it a quick spray with WD-40 to help retard the formation of additional corrosion. We gave that contact only one very brief spray with WD-40 because we don't want to leave too much oily residue inside the case. According to the chronometer's manufacturer, a little battery like this is supposed to last about 24 months. But in fact, this battery had been installed at the unit for more than five years. Because no small amount of gymnastics is required in order to remove the chronometer from the panel, you'll want to be sure to buy batteries that are of good quality and fresh. Check for an expiration date on the pack if you can. Because of the effort required to remove this instrument from the panel, it's not a process that you'll want to repeat very often. Looking back inside the case now, you'll see that there's no pictogram for battery polarity. However, you should be able to determine this simply from the color of the wires. The red wire on the left is the positive side. Be sure to put the positive side of the battery facing the red wire. The new battery is in place inside the case, and as you can see, the display has come to life, so now we'll put the case back together. Now you can see that we've replaced the screw in the case, and the unit once again has to be returned to its proper place in the panel. But this is going to be a bit of a challenge. If you're working alone and don't have a helper, how do you get the unit into the hole in the panel, but secure it in place so that when you press the screws into these holes, the unit doesn't simply fall out? That's what we'll address next. How to replace this when you're working alone. Just after we replaced the screw, guess what happened? The lights in our hangar are on a timer, and we were plunged into darkness. Thank goodness for the bright light on the iPhone 4S that will guide us back to the light switch so that we can complete this job. Much better. To hold the chronometer in place in the panel, we'll simply use a very small piece of two-sided tape applied inside the panel so that when the clock is pressed into the hole it'll remain in place while we refit the screws. This tiny piece of tape will simply be pressed into place inside the hole so that when the clock is put into place it's held there by the tape until we can get a screw in place. In the more current aircraft designs the panel may actually drop forward so that you have easy access to the instruments behind it. However, in older planes like this 1970 Piper Cherokee, that's not the case. And as anyone in an avionics shop can attest, there's no easy way to do this. You will wind up upside down on the seat underneath the panel of the airplane. It actually turned out that using the piece of two-sided tape was of marginal benefit. 
but we were able to get one hand up behind the chronometer and the other on the outside of the panel to thread through a screw so that the unit could be secured in place. As you can see, the installation is complete except for replacement of the panel cover. And now the panel cover is back on and the clock has been reset to the correct time Zulu. We'll complete this short video with a cautionary tale. You may have noted earlier that we were upside down in the airplane, feet extended out the door, where one of them kicked over our cup of fresh hot coffee that ran down the wing walk under the airplane, and it will probably take longer to clean up the coffee mess than it did to replace the battery. Be careful when you're working upside down in your plane where your feet go and what they do.